classes to focus and build on your natural talents, and then you audition to get the chance to actually show those talents. But in between, when you aren't just hustling to make rent, what do you do to make sure that when you book that job, you're actually any good? Well, my answer is, you perform wherever the hell they'll have you. And open mic nights are just the beginning. Every time you haul your sleepy ass up off the couch and get yourselves to an audition, a class, or a seminar, it's an investment in the future. And as I try to learn patience in this adult lifetime, I find out that the payoff comes in stages. Like, when I auditioned and got accepted for this acting studio, the next day I get an email from a woman at the Columbia Film School asking me to audition for their student projects. Bunch of experience behind the camera for a guy who spent his whole life on stage? Sounds great. So I spent that morning at the lovely Columbia University reading for their students. Three hours later, I have a callback to read for one of their projects. It was called The Emptiest Heart, a hipster musical comedy. A bunch of words that I never thought would go together. But you know what? It was a great part for this dickhead film director from Iowa, and several of those words do apply to me. Within two hours, I had not only my first audition for a film, but my first on-camera callback for a film. It turns out I didn't get it, but I spent the morning doing something I'd never done before, and not a lot of mornings are like that. A whole year ago, I took a seminar with casting director Jamie Beth Margolis, who passed my name on to Marie Costanza, who cast the NYU Musical Theater Graduate Program Writing Projects. Oh, she called my name. I wonder if I can get away with putting my microphone in the pocket recording this audition. Anyway, that's to advance for Akron, unless he met so resilient there. Or did she get it from some film he rented for sex Hey, those B-flats squeezed out pretty well. I think I might do this with every audition from now on. Crazy guy with the mic in his pocket. Poppy inches nine, ah, right away. Here we are at the Iridium Jazz Club, located just 20 feet below the salt mines at Ellen Stardust Diner, where I've done so many vlogs before. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here on my day off. Well, we're singing. I guess the goal is, with all this stuff, is that somebody notices you, thinks you're good, and gives you a job. But when you were on your tricycle going up and down the block, singing the only two lines to Annie's Tomorrow that you could remember, were you singing it at the top of your lungs because you thought you'd get a job? No, probably not. After auditioning all morning and then waiting tables all night, maybe the last thing you want to do is go somewhere and sing or, or do a scene. I think the point is to keep going. Like Atreyu said to Artex in the Swamps of Sadness, you have to keep going. You can't let the sadness overtake you. And just know that at some point, Falco, your luck dragon, is going to come get you. Okay, at this point, the never-ending story metaphors break down. Anyway, I've worked in some rinky-dink theaters out in the middle of nowhere. I've done cruise ship shows where everyone's drunk and no one cares that you're up there singing your heart out. But the performers that really amazed me and inspired me were the ones that, even when only the first three rows were filled with sleeping blue hairs, still sang like they were singing for thousands of people on a Broadway stage. And I like to think that I'm that kind of performer, but I'm always working as hard as I can. And don't get it twisted, no matter how much I love it, and no matter how fun it is, it is still work. Whenever I hear people talk about getting rich and famous and all the luxurious things that come with that, I laugh because this kind of job doesn't pay money. It pays in sound. This sound. Jacob Thompson and Yannis Zareel, channeling Elvis.